Hi everyone. Welcome to our teaching today. We are talking about being clothed in his righteousness. Today is Tuesday, March 23rd, 2021. Welcome. So we're going to start with a reading. If you have prayed to surrender your life to Christ as your Lord and Savior, God's word declares many incredible truths about your new identity. No matter what you have, been, have done before, being born again in Christ, in him you are a new creation. And scripture says, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. This is 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Take time to look up and meditate on amazing verses about your new identity in Christ. By faith, agree with what God's word says about you and claim his promises to you as his beloved child. In Christ, you are justified, forgiven, and redeemed. You are crucified to your old sinful self and raised to a new life. You are free from condemnation, free from the law of sin and death, accepted by God, sanctified, holy, and set apart for God's purposes, filled with wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. You are led in constant triumph. You are liberated. You are joined with other believers in God's family. You are an heir to God, and you are blessed with every spiritual blessing. You are chosen, holy, and blameless before God. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit. You are seated in heavenly places. You are God's workmanship created for a life that bears good fruit. You are near to God. You are a partaker of God's promises. You are bold and confident in approaching God. You are transferred from spiritual darkness into God's light. You are a member of the body of Christ. You are hidden with Christ in God. You are guarded in your heart and mind by God's peace. You are perfectly provided for with all of your needs supplied, and you are complete. All of these are scriptures. Every single one is taken from scripture. As you meditate on what God says about you in his word, you will be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is Romans 12, 2. Satan's lies and accusations about you will be replaced with your new identity as the righteousness of God in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Remember God's great promise to those who meditate on his word and receive it as true in their lives. <clears throat> Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the paths of sinners, nor sits in the seats of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of, God, of water that bring forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Amen. This is Psalm 1, verses 1 to 3. Well, Gina just re read a bunch of verses, so we could really wrap it up and go on to part two. <laughs> but all of these okay. are yours now. <clears throat> as the children of God. It was so important for Gina to start with this because what she is reading is what the word actually says about you. Yes. And we just notice all the time that people are, all, when they talk about righteousness, this is why the topic is, is titled Clothed in His Righteousness. Right. When you talk to people, and ask them what's going on or how, you know, how are they doing? For some reason, they always want to talk about the things that they did right 
or the things that they're doing wrong, and they use that as the uh, for for their for their identity of whether mm -hmm. they're right with God or they're not right with God. Right. So here's an interesting scripture. I'm going to go to the book of Job, chapter 29, verse 14. I put on righteousness, and it clothed me. My justice was like a robe and a turban. I'm going to go over to the Dake Bible. I'm going to read you the commentary, what it says here. To be clothed with a person is a Greek phrase signifying to take upon one the interest of another, to enter into his views and be wholly on his side, imitating him in all things. Sounds like scripture, right? We're, we're supposed to be imitators of Christ. Where am I at here, babe? 357. Yes. B. To put on Christ means to be clothed with him, to assume his person and character, and to act the part and sustain the character of Christ's daily life. Good, good stuff here. So where we're going with this is, first of all, you have to realize what righteousness is. The meaning is that you have right standing with God. Yeah. Would you agree with that, sweetie? Absolutely. Your righteousness comes because of the finished work of what Jesus already did. It's for right. it's what Jesus already paid for. It's through his death, burial, and resurrection. And our faith in him, our belief and faith in the finished work, mm -hmm is what gives us the right standing. So this should help people today that you have to get away from this workspace mentality. And there is, a, oh, that's a whole nother topic because we talked about this too. Naturally, when you are clothed in, in the righteousness of Jesus, the byproduct will be that you are gonna have good works flowing out of you. That's a byproduct. Mm -hmm. And it's important to know this. Absolutely. I liked what um, what our pastor, Dave Whittington, was saying this past Sunday in his sermon where, you know, each one of us know who we were when we received Christ. You know, the place in life where we were, the, the mistakes that we were facing, the sins we were committing, and, and the life that we were leading, and who we were as a person in this right. world but when we said yes to jesus we put on christ we get filled with the holy spirit and we begin to become a gradual progression of becoming more and more like jesus every day our righteousness is in him we are already um received we are loved there is nothing that you can do as far as good works and and right standing and the right things to say and the way you look and the way you're living to make god love you any more than he already does Amen. you're his you're his child he has received you he loves you he wants you and it's it's there's nothing we can do to make ourselves better or worse in his standing it's just now that we have clothed mm -hmm. ourselves in christ now we are becoming more like him and we are walking in his ways and we are producing fruit in our lives. Amen. I'm going to read from this again. We used this a few weeks ago. This is Bible Faith Study Course by Kenneth Hagan. This uh, is an excellent When book. we gave a teaching and used some of these... Uh, Chat, we read a few uh, verses off of it. Somebody, that a viewer watched it, and they were so thrilled. They wanted to know about it. We told them about the book, and they got it, and they loved it. So we recommend this would be a wonderful book to purchase. Bible Faith Study Course by Kenneth Hagan. Mm -hmm. This is an interesting story. 
as God's righteousness received the bountiful fullness of God. Smith Wigglesworth told of a time in England when an Episcopal minister who was 80 years of age asked Wigglesworth if he would come and pray for him because he wanted to receive the Holy Ghost. Wigglesworth went to him and they read the scriptures and began to pray. Wigglesworth said that he never heard a more beautiful prayer than the one he heard that man pray. But Wigglesworth told the man that God is not interested in beautiful prayers. God is interested in faith. As they were praying, the elderly gentleman said, God, make me holy. That elderly gentleman thought that before he could receive the Holy Ghost, he had to be made holy. Wigglesworth then told the man to get up off his knees, and Wigglesworth explained to the man that he was holy already because he was a believer that the blood of Jesus had cleansed him from all sin. Right. I hope you guys get that because that's so important. You already are holy. You know, the Bible says, be holy, in, in 1 Peter it says, be holy for I am holy. So we are, we are called as Christians to walk a holy life. Yes. We're sanctified and we're set apart from the world. Like, like we say each teaching, there should be a radical difference in a born-again believer than there is with somebody that does not know Jesus Christ yet. Yes. And if there is no difference and you're ident identifying yourself as a Christian, then it would be very important to really examine yourself, get into the Word, and really start seeing what the Bible does say about you. Yeah. I loved everything you read from there, because it's just all Scripture. It is all Scripture. It, it, it's all verses, and if people would start seeing themselves that way, mm -hmm. you know, the best way to pray is thanking the Lord that yeah. He has made you righteous. Thank you that he you has. have right standing with the Father. That's right. As you declare those things, if you see yourself righteous and holy, and you and you stop seeing yourself as a dirty, rotten sinner, yeah. then the byproduct is naturally going to be, you are going to be a righteous person. You're going to mm -hmm. understand the right standing that you have with the Father, and you're going to walk out an amazing Christian life. Absolutely. And the way to do that is number one relationship that's what father god wants with you Absolutely. it's all about relationship he wants to have a conversation with you and number two is getting into the word mm -hmm. to see what does the father say about me absolutely as you're reading it you know gina's got a beautiful bible here and she's got it highlighted all over the place and <laughs> I got Bibles everywhere, and then I have one that I do highlight, then some other ones I don't have highlighted. But, you know, when there's a verse that you're reading that sticks out to you, highlight that verse. Yeah. These are God's promises to you. I mean, and then what you need to do is declare them over yourself. You know, I mean, that's really important. And Amen. you shouldn't be... You, as a child of God and a born-again believer, you shouldn't be asking God, you know, for these things. You shouldn't have to come to the Lord and say, Lord, please bless me with every spiritual blessing. Lord, please liberate me. He's already done it. And his word says so. It's done. It was That's done at the babe. cross. It's, it's, it is a finished work. You are his child. He has already paid the price. So what you need to do is when you have the word in front of you and you see his promises to you, you declare them over yourself and you thank God for them. Thank you, Lord, that I am liberated. Thank you, God, that I am an heir to you. Thank you, Lord, that I am chosen, holy, and blameless before you. That is so good. Thank you, Lord. And and declare these things over yourself and, and be thankful for them because it's done. It's not, you don't have to ask for it. It is done. Yeah, keep going with that. That's well, really good. That's okay. <laughs> I knew no. you have. No, keep I'm going. I'm taking off now. <laughs> no, take off because I was looking for something else anyway. Keep going. Keep preaching. But, but it's important to, the reason it's important to thank him for it 
and to declare it over yourself is because you need to know that it's already done. Sometimes Christians come to God like they're still waiting for him to do these things. They're done. It's the, the work of the cross is finished. We just need to know it, believe it, and receive it. We are his. We claim it as ours. It, it, these are his promises to us. So we thank him for it and we declare them out loud. Amen. Amen. That's good. I needed you to do that because I was trying to find a certain thing on the did page. You find and I, it? I did find it. Landed. It. <laughs> this is still from uh, Kenneth Hagen's book, Bible Faith Study Course. You can get it all for their ministry, or you can go on Amazon and purchase it. We highly recommend it. Yeah, absolutely. The same Greek root word that is translated righteousness here in Romans 3 25 and 26 is also translated just and justifier in the same verse the margin of my bible reads that he might himself be righteous Romans 3 26 the words just and righteous or righteousness can be interchangeable terms what is this verse in Romans 3 26 telling us that God has declared his righteousness to us through Jesus. Yeah. And that God himself is righteous and he has become my righteousness, Gina's righteousness, and your righteousness. That's right. And your righteousness too, Jacob, if you're listening. God is righteous of all who have believed on Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5.21 this is not theory, but a Bible fact. God's righteousness is a gift. Most people have thought that righteousness is some kind of a state that they had to attain to be right living, but that isn't true at all. And I'm going to read that one more time. Most people have thought that righteousness is some kind of a state that had to attain to by right living, but that isn't true at all. Yeah, people think they had to attain, attain it by right living. And we'll go on to part two with that and keep going with this, that by the time this teaching is done, you're going to learn that you are righteous because of the finished work of the cross. That's right. And the more that you see yourself righteous, the more you're going to be living a righteous lifestyle. It's true. And it's important to know that you already are holy and acceptable and beloved. Mm -hmm. The Lord loves you dearly. I'm going to wrap it with the uh, Leif Petlin quote. I love this one. God loves you just how you are, yep. but he loves you too much to let you remain as you are. So we're constantly, each day we have the wonderful opportunity to look more and more like Jesus each day. Right. And we'll be right back for part two. Love you guys.